After conducting a nationwide search, fielding more than 100 interested students ranging in age from high school students to graduate students, we are pleased to have with us this evening Ms. Emily Briere. In addition to serving as tonight's keynote speaker, the club is also providing Emily with a $10,000 scholarship to support her further academic pursuits. <laughs> Emily is a junior studying mechanical engineering at Duke University, and her impressive list of awards and honors includes serving as director of the Time Capsule to Mars mission, as well as holding a research associate position at NASA Ames Academy for Space Exploration. Please help me welcome the future of the aerospace industry and tonight's keynote speaker, Ms. Emily Briere. Like so many others, I've been interested in space since I was young. <laughs> I remember the magic school bus in space on TV, my mom teaching me about night and day using a flashlight and an apple, and finding out that Wallace and Gromit's moon was made of cheese. Our early home videos show me hopping from couch to couch clad in an ill-fitted, self-constructed astronaut suit, which I confess was just made of cardboard cereal boxes, aluminum foil, and dryer tubing. <laughs> Space filled my world. Light fixtures were galaxies. My dad's minivan, an interstellar spaceship. My brother's room, a black hole. <laughs> In a family of four kids, in a house that seemed to be the destination of all kids in the neighborhood, every day was another episode of Space at the Briere House. For a while, I was probably just like every other kid. For all of us, space was still the final frontier. But over time, my friends' interests changed. They grew up. Their dreams evolved to those of glittering dresses, sold-out rock concerts, and sleek new cars. But Somehow, my interests never changed. Maybe I never grew up. But I like to think I just somehow managed to keep that childlike wonder, the ability to look up at the sky and just get lost in it. Truthfully, I hope I never lose that ability. <laughs> we live in the country, in the middle of nowhere, really, and that's the best place in the world to watch space. You see, from nowhere, you can see everywhere in terrific precision. For a while, I'm sure more than a few people regarded my fascination with space as childish. Yet, it's been said that kids see the big picture, that they ask the questions so simple that they're often overlooked. And in an age where tiny pixels of detail rule the portrait and where the most obvious questions seem to be forgotten, Maybe the impact of adolescence isn't light years away. And maybe we don't have to first grow up to let childhood define our future. I find myself asking some of these big questions about space. For instance, why do we, as the human race that is, feel such a desire towards space? Well, history has provided prerogative for similar exploratory journeys. The American colonists sought religious independence. The Portuguese sought wealth. The Romans sought greatness. Space is most decidedly a symbol of exploration, novelty, intrigue, and even potential wealth. But we should not dismiss the pressing possibility that we go to space simply because it is our future. Having been born in 1993, I find myself in a... <laughs> I've grown up in the transitory space age. We find ourselves shifting from the old, glorified, and nationalized space race to one driven more by consortia and collaboration, from a government-driven program motivated by national pride to one largely driven by the global private sector, from near-Earth orbit focus to talk of corralling an asteroid mine or even living on Mars. 
We're moving faster than ever before to make this giant leap forward into the interplanetary era that will define all subsequent generations of life here on Earth. Now, that's about as unprecedented as it was to when we first set sail from one continent to another. We're at a momentous threshold. We're traveling to colonize another planet. And I still remain the big picture girl. I still look up and I want to see that these giant leaps are for all mankind. Recall President Kennedy's preamble to man's most hazardous adventure. For the eyes of the world now look into space, to the moon, and to the planets beyond, and we have vowed that we shall not see them governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. Whether we're talking about corporations, billionaires, or nation states, I believe that these next steps are not in the name of individuals or conglomerates. They are for humanity and all it represents. So why not take this next big step together as mankind? I'm one of the leaders of a space endeavor that we believe could refocus and rem remind ourselves what it's all about. It's about our collective future in the universe. Our international team, centered at MIT's Space Propulsion Lab, is working to send the first ever student-led CubeSat to Mars. Our vision is to unite humanity under one mission, with the goal of landing a time capsule of humanity on the surface of the red planet. Time Capsule to Mars aims to involve every country in the world while maximizing both the amount of new technology tested and the value of science returned. We hope it will be the first private mission to Mars. It will be the first interplanetary trial of ion electric bay propulsion, a technology with the promise to reduce transport time to Mars to a mere four months. It will carry a digital time capsule containing media encoded with the audio, video, and photographic data of millions of people around the world, including the human genome. Our technical team will invite along on the ride K through 12 age kids who, via the internet, can access their own personalized curriculum-based mission control and come along for the ride. They will be able to virtually come along on the journey from uploading their picture, tracing its progression through the solar system, and watching their landing of their picture on Mars. The interactive mission is designed to renew the inspirations of an old generation, while introducing the new generation to the wonders of space exploration. It is meant to inspire anyone to be an astronaut, a scientist, a colonist. This type of global immersive outreach didn't exist when I was young. But now, being able to watch my crayon-drawn Martian picture land on Mars, that's our mission. And on top of it all, our multi-million dollar mission expects to be the largest crowdfunded effort in history. Our formal announcement is just weeks away now. Our goal is to make the adventure of colonizing another planet one that is once again shared by a unified humanity, taking this giant leap together with purpose, with respect, with community. You see, it's not about the boots or the landers or the robots. It's about us, we the people, Spaceship Earth. Think back to your own early formative years and what got you excited about space. Perhaps it was glow-in-the-dark stars, E.T., or siblings you wanted to send on a one-way mission to Mars. <laughs> Think about how cool it would have been to take something of your own, a baseball hat, a card, a drawing, and stick it on a spaceship headed for the moon. What would you want to immortalize? Well, we hope you'll grab your camera, snap a selfie, and come along for Earth's time capsule ride to Mars. I would like to thank the National Space Club for the incredible opportunity to be your keynote speaker tonight, as well as the immensely generous scholarship that they have awarded me to support my education. The investment that this nonprofit organization is making in the future of our country's aerospace program is indisputable and admirable. I would also like to congratulate the other award winners tonight. I've snuck a peek at your achievements, and you are setting the bar very high for my generation. Indeed, tonight I am honored to stand in front of the most influential individuals in our fields who have laid the groundwork to make it possible for me to be here today, doing what I love. It's so easy to get caught up in today's industry discussions of the minutia of space travel. 
of radiation exposure, punctured rover tires, of dust storms. But I would urge us not to lose sight of the big picture of what we are collectively accomplishing here. We are on the verge of the first interplanetary habitation. We are all working towards a future in which humanity has expanded spacewards to thousands of new worlds. And instead of hopping from couch cushion to couch cushion, we're hopping from planet to planet. That is where our collective future lies. And I look forward to working with all of you in exploring this infinite, this final frontier. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Your passion is truly contagious, and I think the future of our industry will be in very good hands.